Hey there, my name is Logan and I am 36 years old. I am a businessman. I own a logistics company and a couple of restaurants. I have also invested in other businesses as well. My businesses are doing well, bringing in good money. I come from a wealthy family. My father owns a big farm that supplies livestock, dairy, fiber, and other things. My father wanted me to take over his business, which I eventually will, but I had other plans. I started my first business, a logistics company 11 years ago. Fortunately, it did pretty well, allowing me to open a couple of restaurants. After a good amount of revenue started coming in from the businesses, I hired a financial advisor. My financial advisor told me to start investing in other businesses, and I did. A few businesses that I had invested in failed, but others did pretty well. Investing turned out to be quite fruitful, not just in terms of money, but it also got me valuable assets that I leverage at times. Two years ago, when I was 34, I met my wife, Alice, in one of my restaurants. She came with a group of friends. They were celebrating a friend's birthday. One of her friends made quite a scene when she found a hair on her food. All of the other customers that were in the restaurant started to complain about the ruckus. I had to come in. I came in to pacify the situation, but Alice's friend was just not ready to listen. She kept yelling at us. That's when Alice intervened and calmed her friend down. I apologized to the entire group and gave them a bottle of wine for free as a token of apology for everything. Everything went back to normal. After the party was over, Alice and her friends left. A couple of minutes later, I got a call from security that one of the customer's cars had broken down and needed a mechanic. I went down to the parking lot, only to find that it was Alice whose car had broken down. I went up to her to check her car. I checked the car but couldn't find what was wrong. I told Alice that I would call a mechanic to come look at her car, meanwhile she could go up and sit in the restaurant. She agreed. I called one of the mechanics who had a garage nearby to come to the restaurant and look into the car. I took Alice to the restaurant and made her sit at one of the tables. As I was leaving, Alice told me to sit with her for a while. She felt weird sitting all alone in a restaurant full of people. I sat with her and we talked. Thank you for keeping me accompanied. I should be the one thanking you for pacifying such a heated situation. Sitting here with you is the least I can do. I've already called the mechanic and he should be on his way here. You're a great help. Since we'll be sitting here for a while, would you care to have some wine with me? It's on me. Yeah, sure, we have nothing better to do. Hey buddy, could you get some red wine and two glasses for us? Thanks. So you're like a manager here or something. I actually own this place. Oh, you're the owner. That's right. Wait! I can't insist you sit here with me, you must be having a lot of work. You can leave if you want to. My team can handle the restaurant for some time without me. Plus, it's always a good time to have some wine, isn't it? That is so sweet of you. No wonder why everything here is so great. The food, the staff, and everything. A guy like you surely knows how to run a restaurant. Thank you, that's very kind of you. And I apologize for the inconvenience earlier. Never has it ever happened that someone found a hair in the food. We pay extra attention to take care of things like these. Well, I guess you can't always be perfect, can you? That's true. I wish more customers were like you, so considerate about everything. What can I say? The world's not a perfect place. It was never meant to be. Oh, here comes the wine. Allow me to pour you some. Thanks. Oh, pardon my manners. I am Logan. I am Alice. It's nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you too. So you're from around here? I am from a nearby city, but I just moved here a couple of months ago. I am a freelancer and I work from home all the time. So I figured that I have the liberty to move to a different city and experience new things. Interesting. Bold of you to just move to a completely strange city just to experience new things. Takes a lot of courage. I've got a lot of friends here, so I wasn't worried about anything. You just met them. In fact, the friend who was yelling was the one who gave me this idea. It's a pretty interesting take on life, I'll give you that. It is. And the best part is, I get to meet new people. I get to hear their stories. I get to experience different cultures and explore new places. It's quite fun. You should do it sometimes. I wish I could. But I got business to take care of. You got to take a break every now and then. And just enjoy your life, you know. You can make more money, but you won't be able to buy more time. Are you always this wise? Or is it the wine talking? Wine, I suppose. But you get the point, right? I do. I do. Oh, wait a minute. I got a text from security. 
Your car has been repaired. It's good to go. About time. Well, thank you for the wine, Logan, and I'll pay for the car repair. Oh, please. It's nothing. I have a monthly tab with the mechanic. I'll just add it to that. It's all right. Well, thanks. You're such a gentleman. I try to be. One more thing. I hope you're not going to leave the city anytime soon. I guess I'll not. Why? I would love it if you could come again. I enjoyed talking to you. Sure, I'll come again. I enjoyed talking to you too. Deal? Ha, huh. deal. We got up from our chairs and I escorted Alice to her car. The car was working fine now. Alice got into the car, thanked me, and drove away. Meeting Alice ignited something within me. I wanted to meet her again and I hoped that she would come back again to the restaurant soon. Listening to the things she said made me realize how mature and mindful she was about everything. She felt like a warm breeze. She said some things that actually got me thinking about my life. And it was the first time we were meeting and it was such a short meeting. Yet she managed to leave quite an impression on me. I prayed to God that she would come again and then I went upstairs. A week went by and she didn't show up. I had told my managers to inform me if Alice ever showed up again. But she didn't. After two weeks or so, Alice came to the restaurant. One of my managers called me and told me about it. I was at the logistics center of my company. As soon as I heard about Alice, I left everything and got into the car. I dashed off to the restaurant. I was excited and happy that I would get to meet her again. I reached the restaurant in around 15 minutes. I went up to Alice's table and she was happy to see me. There you are. I was looking for you. I thought you were not here. I was. I was just in the kitchen, taking care of some things. Oh, I see, the kitchen. You cook? Sometimes. But not as good as the chefs here. I wouldn't know about it. Unless you cook something for me someday. I don't think you would like it. Let me be the judge of that. Well, all right then. Do you want me to cook something special for you right now? Oh no, not right now. I was just having a bad day, so I came here to meet you. That's it. You must have a lot of work to do. I can't just force you to leave everything and cook, just for me. Bad day? What happened? Oh, it's a long story. I got time. Wait, let me cook you something. And then I'll come, sit with you, and you can tell me everything. Oh no, please, that's not necessary. I have time. I am the owner. I call the shots here. Well then just sit with me here for a while. I am already troubling you enough by taking up your time. I can't let you cook something for me. That'd be too much. It's all right. I can cook if you want. Maybe some another day. So I have another reason to visit you again. Well, it makes perfect sense. So, do you want me to sit with you? Yes, please. And the food and the wine are on me today. I insist. All right. I wouldn't mind. Perfect. So you told me you were having a bad day. Well, yes, one of my clients that I used to work for just fired me for no reason. He told me that he won't be needing me anymore and he just fired me. Oh, that's so mean. I know, right. I love freelancing and it brings in good money. But there's always this uncertainty that worries me. It's going to be all right, Alice. I am sure you can find more clients. It's a big world. And I am pretty sure you're good at your job. I'd like to think so. What do you do? If I may ask, oh right, I never told you what I do. I am a graphic designer. I make creatives for my clients. For their social media, their events, promotions, and everything. Oh, so you're the creative kind. You know, I own a couple of businesses and I could use someone like you to make creatives for my websites and other things. Are you offering me a job because you feel pity for me? You've not even seen my work. But I know you. I don't bet on the business. I bet on people. And you seem like a good bet. Well, here's my card. We can talk business over a call. Let's just enjoy each other's company right now. Agreed. Alice and I talked for about two hours. She told me everything about her and I told her everything about my businesses. We seemed to connect very well with each other. After we finished our meal and the wine, I asked her if she ever wanted to go out on a date with me and she said yes. I already had her business card, but she gave me another phone number. It was her personal phone number. She told me to call her whenever I felt like talking to her. I was on cloud nine. I knew she was starting to see the spark I saw in us when we met for the first time. We hugged each other and then she left. After she was gone, my managers looked at me and gave me a smile. I smiled back at them. We all knew things were going in the right direction. 
I called Alice the same night and we talked for hours. Thereafter, we started going out on dates. We dated for around four months and on one of the dates, she told me about her sad past. She told me that her father was abusive and used to hit her mom. Her mom ran away with her, but they had no place to go. They lived on the streets for weeks until her mother passed away due to illness. After her mother's death, she was sent to an orphanage where she used to get bullied every day. The moment she turned 18, she ran away from the orphanage. She worked different jobs to survive and save money for her education. Eventually, after a couple of years, she had saved enough money to enroll herself in a graphic designing program. She learned graphic design and started working for clients. And that's how she managed to survive. Coming from a wealthy family, who had everything at his disposal, her story hit me hard. I couldn't imagine Alice living on the streets, watching her mother die, and living in an orphanage. All of this was a bit overwhelming for me. And the thing that fascinated me the most about her was even after so many things, she was still such a lovely person. She was kind to everyone, and she had a very lively vibe. She had a very positive outlook on life. I always thought she was wise and mature, but after she told me everything, I knew why she was the way she was. She had seen a lot of hardship in her life and it evolved her emotionally. She was inspiring, and I was falling in love with her more and more each day. Four months later, I proposed to her and she said yes. We had a grand celebration at the restaurant. I was the happiest man on the planet when Alice agreed to marry me. After two months of engagement, we decided to tie the knot. We got married. Everything was great. I had married a great woman, I was living a great life and everything was going on just fine. I was happy. But fate had different plans for me. One month after the wedding, when I came back home from work, I overheard my wife talking to her best friend, Grace, and the things she said completely turned my world upside down. She was in our bedroom, talking to Grace on loudspeaker. I guess she thought that she was all alone in the house. I could hear exactly what Grace was saying from the other side. I hid behind the door and heard her saying some heartbreaking things about me. I cannot believe that fool fell for my sob story. Logan is such a fool. He thinks that the world is made up of cotton candy and roses. I know, right? How can a man who runs so many businesses be such a dimwit? I guess all the fat in his body is starting to affect his brain. And that plan of yours, to go to his restaurant and make a scene, and I'd be the one to save the day. It was such a genius move. He fell right into the trap. And he didn't even notice that I had jammed the spark plug of my car. He's such a fool. Well, you do have pretty eyes, I give you that. Any man could fall for such beautiful eyes. And a cunning brain like yours would take us to great places. We're such an amazing team together. I know, right? All right, well, I got to go. Logan should be home anytime soon. I need to be prepared to act like a good wife. I'll call you tomorrow afternoon after he goes to work. All right, we'll talk tomorrow then. Bye. Love ya. Yeah. Bye. Love ya. Yeah. The moment Alice hung up the phone, I tiptoed my way to the door and went outside. After like 10 minutes or so, I came in, pretending like nothing happened. Alice came and kissed me telling me how much she missed me. I told her I missed her too. I had to pretend like everything was fine. If Alice got suspicious, I'd never be able to find out the truth about her and what she wants from me. We had our dinner and we went to sleep. I couldn't sleep the whole night, thinking about all the things she said to Grace. Something was definitely fishy and I had to find out what was going on. The next day, I decided to hire a private investigator to do a background check on her but I didn't know where to find one but my elder brother, Brian, did. Brian went through a divorce two years ago because his wife was cheating on him. He had hired a private investigator to gather enough evidence and proof to turn the divorce case in his favor, avoiding a heavy alimony. I called my brother the next day and told him everything about it. All of the things I told him about Grace made him as furious as a bear. I guess he got flashbacks from the time when his wife was cheating on him. I still remember that phone call. It felt like Brian would break the phone, out of anger. I had to calm him down, even though it was me who was in this mess. I called him and he picked up. Hey Brian, it's me. Logan? Hey, what's up, big guy? It's been such a long time since you've called. I've called you for something important. I need your help. Yeah, sure. What do you want? So I overheard Alice on the phone with her best friend, Grace. She was talking about how she fooled me with her sob story. What? fooled you? I don't understand. Yeah, so she said the story she told me about herself was fake. 
And she also said something about the first time we met. From what I could understand from their conversation, it was all a setup. How can it be? How can she? The deceit is unbelievable. We should go to the cops and get her arrested. She could be a murderer for all we know. Calm down, Brian. Let's not jump to conclusions. We got to do something. We can't let deceitful women like these get the best of us. That's what I've called you for. I need to hire a private investigator. Private investigator? For what? Or to conduct a background check on her. I believe Alice is not who she pretends to be. There's more to her. She's definitely hiding something. All right. I'll call the investigator and tell him to get in touch with you. Is he reliable? Is he effective? He's the best. He was a great help during my divorce case. He'll definitely find some dirt on Alice. All right, just give him my phone number and tell him to call me. Sure. I wonder why do the good guys have to suffer? Why do evil women always target the good guys? Why is it always like this? It just makes me so angry. I feel like punching something. Calm down, Brian. You don't need to be so aggressive about it. We'll find out the truth soon, then we'll act in the best way possible. I guess you're right. We hung up the phone. The next evening, I got a call from the private investigator. He wanted to meet me to discuss the case and compensation. We decided to meet at a restaurant that was 15 miles away from my house. I didn't want anyone to see me with a private investigator, especially Alice. And since I didn't know who Alice really was, I couldn't take the chance of meeting the investigator anywhere near the house or office. I reached the restaurant and I entered the restaurant. I glanced around but I couldn't figure out who the investigator was. Then I saw a man waving at me. He was sitting all alone and I knew he was the one I was looking for. I walked up to his table and I sat down in the chair right in front of him. We introduced each other and then we went right ahead to talk business. I told him everything about Alice in the phone call with Grace. I told him how I met Alice, where she lived before she moved in with me. I also told him about Grace. I shared every single thing I knew about Alice. He carefully listened to every detail and agreed to take my case. He told me I had to pay in advance and then, I could pay the rest of his fee after the work was done. I agreed. We made a deal and shook hands. He left the restaurant and I left for my home. After about four months, I got a call from the investigator. He told me that he had some news for me. We decided to meet at the same restaurant. I drove 15 miles to get to the restaurant. We met and he made some shocking revelations about Alice. Alice was a con woman and she was an ex-convict. He also told me that there were several legal offenses against her. He even got CCTV camera footage where it was clear that she and her friends, including Grace, were trying to mug an old woman in a dark alley. But the most shocking revelation was that she was the mother of a three-year-old daughter. Her BF, who was also her daughter's biological father, was in prison when she ran away and came here, leaving her daughter in an orphanage. How can a mother do this to her own child? I never imagined Alice would turn out to be such a cold and ruthless woman. I was stunned to know everything about her. The private investigator came with proof of everything. He had brought pictures, photocopies of documents such as police reports, her daughter's birth record, and everything. He was indeed very good at his job. He also suggested that I go to the cops, at the earliest. Alice could be a threat to my life, but I had other plans. I thanked the investigator for his services and I paid him the rest of the fees. He took the money and went away. And now, I was sitting alone in a restaurant, 15 miles away from my home. I kept looking at the pictures and documents. I couldn't believe that I fell for something like this. I was furious. I decided to put an end to this. I went home and I called Brian to tell him about everything. I got news about Alice. What is it? Alice is not who she says she is. She is an ex-convict and a fugitive. What? An ex-convict and a fugitive? Yes. And Grace and her other friends are an accomplice to her. They've mugged people before. Wait a second. This is too much. How do you know all of this? The private investigator did a pretty good job. He found dirt on Alice. Quite a lot, actually. Also, Alice has a three-year-old daughter whom she left in an orphanage. And the father is in prison. She is a criminal. Logan, I am worried for you. We should go to the police. We will. But I have something else in my mind before we hand her to the cops. What is it? I am not just going to hand over Alice to the cops. I am going to hand over every one of her friends. 
The private investigator gave me a videotape where she and her friends are mugging an old woman in a dark alley. That should be enough proof to send all of them away for a long time. Sounds like a plan. All right, I have to go. I'll call you later. Don't tell anyone about anything. We can't risk it. Keep it to yourself. I will. Don't worry. I couldn't sleep the entire night. It had been almost six months since I married Alice, and now I knew who she really was. She was an extraordinary con woman, I give her that. I wouldn't have known anything if I hadn't overheard her talking to Grace on the phone the other day. But now I needed to plan my next move. I wanted to get all of them arrested, but I needed to do it all at once. It was quite possible that if I turned in Alice, her friends would flee as soon as they got the news. I couldn't risk it. I needed all of them in one place when the police made the arrest. I came up with a plan. The next day, I went to Alice and told her that we should celebrate the six happy months that we've been married. I told her that she should invite all of her friends and I would invite my friends and family, and that we could all celebrate together. I would throw a grand party that all of us would enjoy. She was a little hesitant at first, but then, with a little persuasion, she agreed to it. I told her we would have the party three days later at my restaurant so I could tell everyone how we met for the first time. It would be romantic. Now she was all in. The ball was in the court now. Three days later, I organized a celebration at my restaurant. Alice had called all of her friends and everyone showed up. The plan was in motion. Brian was outside the venue with the cops, waiting for my cue to bust in and make the arrests. Everyone was enjoying the party. After a while, I stood up and called for everyone's attention. I told everybody that I wanted to deliver a speech, and everyone cheered. Now I had everyone's attention. All right, so thank you all for coming here today. Means a lot to Alice and me. Hey, sweetheart. What are you doing? I just want people to know how much I love you and how much you mean to me. You're going to make me blush in front of everyone. Well, you look more beautiful when you blush, babe. All right, so this is the very restaurant Alice and I met for the first time. She was sitting right there on that table. Alice averted a massive crisis, and that was the moment I fell in love with her. I fell in love with her eyes, her soul, her mind, and everything about her just made me have butterflies in my stomach and Alice told me about her sad past life that was hard to believe. And I want all of you to know about it. I have a video that I want everyone to look at. What? What are you doing? Just wait and watch, love. I played the video on a big projector so that everyone could see what it was all about. It was the video of Alice and her friends mugging the old woman. Everyone was shocked to see it. I was on call with Brian all this time and I told him to let the cops in and make the arrests. In a few minutes, the cops busted in and arrested Alice, Grace, and every one of her friends who was in the video. Alice was shocked to see everything that was happening. She looked around the restaurant and saw her friends getting arrested. She realized it was the end of the line for them. She looked at me with teary eyes and I told her she chose the wrong man to con. A teardrop rolled down her left eye and she got furious. She tried setting herself free to hit me but the office had held her down. The police took everyone in. After a few days, Alice and her friends were presented before court. I submitted all the evidence I had against them and they were found guilty. They were charged with fraud, robbery, assault, identity theft, conspiracy, and more. The police also recovered texts between Grace and Alice, discussing how they would transfer all of my money to a fake bank account and run away to a different city. They were sentenced to spend time behind bars for quite some time. It has been one year since Alice and her friends got arrested and they won't be coming out anytime soon. We have also finalized our divorce. Seven months ago, I went to the orphanage where Alice left her daughter. I went to meet her and she was such a sweet little girl. I can't adopt her because I am not married, but I am looking for a good family that would raise her as their daughter. That little girl doesn't deserve to pay for the wrongs her mom and dad did. And as for me, I learned not to trust anyone so easily. People can be deceptive. After everything that has happened, it feels like it's much harder to read people than to run a business. All of this has taught me a lot. But it's such a relief that I was able to look through all the deceit before Alice and her friends could rob me. I got lucky. It's good to see Alice pay for everything. I hope the prison time helps her become a better person when she finally comes out. 